Hello, it's Tammy C. Walker, the owner of Dreams Are a Reality. I created this channel to provide light and love. How are you out there in YouTube land? All is well here. Today's topic is more of a, if I'm older than you, Auntie Tammy talk with you all. And for those are, that are my age, just some lessons learned. Today, we're going to talk about you have to see it through. And what is it? Whatever your situation is, I'm going to use sports as my um, analogy. As a longtime Chicago Bulls fan, I remember watching the Bulls when Michael Jordan was drafted. I remember the first year Michael Jordan, if I'm not mistaken, rookie year he broke his foot or ankle, but I think it was foot. After that, he healed and the rest. Do I need to say any more? Um, I often see comparisons and numbers about Michael Jordan. Ah, this number, that number. I just wish I could just roll the tape when I see that stuff. Yeah, the ball never lies. The numbers never lie. But the, the way he changed the game of basketball forever, the moves he made on the court in six championships and the way we did it, the fashion we did it. It was like with sweeps and we just dominated, um, you know, we dominated the NBA three years straight and then we had a little break and then he came back and did it again. So that type of um, athleticism is unparalleled second to none uh, there'll never be another Michael Jordan ever now um, of course it's going to be other greats which I always say LeBron James I think Steph Curry changed the game of basketball and there are other greats still coming but I'm saying Michael Jordan one of a kind and one thing people can't talk about or take away you can say numbers and all this and that his star power he enters a room it's just like a natural attraction to this guy. Yeah, people say he's a jerk or he could be this, he could be arrogant. Um, I never met him, but I'm going to go with deep in his heart. I think he's a good guy. Um, he was raised well, that's for sure. How would you act if you were a billionaire? <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not ever saying it's right to be arrogant, but, you know, sometimes people don't know how they'll act until it's them. I hope it never happens to me. I don't know if I'll ever be a billionaire, but why not? <laughs> you never know where you're going to be in this life. But uh, you do want to stay humble. Anywho, I'm saying all that to say, as a fan, I had to see it through. If I really was a true Bulls fan, uh, I remember when the Pistons would always beat us. And Michael Jordan was scrawny. So was Scottie Pippen. They both were thin thinner guys and when they saw that the Pistons were what they had to go through to get to the other side they came back buffed up and with muscles it didn't happen overnight it didn't happen in a year it didn't happen in two years it probably took probably three or four for them to become the Bulls dynasty I'm just trying to give a message out to those in 2022 soon to be 2023 nothing comes instant and <clears throat> excuse me some of the major problems that we have right now is because we don't want to see it through. You know, I, I talk to a lot of people, you all. Some, some want to show up in a classroom and get an A, but they don't want to read the doggone material. It's silly to me. They want to get on a basketball team, football team, be a cheerleader, but the body is out of shape. So it's this laziness that we have. We want something for nothing. If you want to pass an exam, you want to get your license, you want to become a doctor, or lawyer, whatever, you got to study. There's no way around it. I'm sure you all remember recently the actresses that was paying money for their kids to get in these top colleges. That's not how it should go. You want your kid to get her butt in a nice college or your son, they need to do it just like I had to do it. Fill out the application and for some you have to take uh, an exam, you know, or a placement test or whatever. They shouldn't get in no easier than me or you because they have money. But this is how people think. 
the arrogance, the arrogance. And, you know, sorry to pick on Americans. We number one when it comes to entitlement and arrogance. And it's a it's a really a shameful way of being. And this is why our kids, our youth, they want it so easy because some of the adults want it easy. You want to get married, you know, and one thing about it, I want to give you all a tip as somebody who's been married and desire to get married again. It's not about that wedding day, you know, putting on the dress. Oh, look at my ring. Oh, how many carrots is that? Oh, we're getting our new home and we got a new dog and now I'm pregnant. And, you know, all that stuff is great, but you want to see it through until the end. The end goal should be to sit in the park with your husband or wife and sitting there and looking at nature and laughing and talking as 80 year olds. That should be the end goal, not just a wedding and you do what you want and he does what he wants and it's all sloppy and it's drama. You got to see it through until the end. Seeing it through until the end with marriage and relationships mean relationship. It means showing up every day, even those days when you kind of don't like your husband. I kind of not feeling my wife today, but I'm still going to show up and say, good morning, babe. How you doing? You know, being kind and respectful to each other, even on those days when you may not be feeling your best, but where's the love? As Roberta Flack and Donnie Hathaway sang about, where is the love? You want to be respectful and loving to each other. And I, I just really wish people would do this. Stay out of the game of love. If you don't know how to love yourself, you got to just stay out of it until you can do that work. Okay. And that's another thing, seeing it through until the end. If you have trauma, a lot of us, if you have past hurts and doubts, a lot of us do the work, do the work. Um, and I should look, I'm hypocritical because I got people contacting me. And now, honestly, as a part-time therapist, I just don't have the space. I'm going to have to do a wait list or I refer them to um, someone else, you know, and post in my group or or whatever. I just don't want to leave them hanging. But people are trying to do the work. That's why I said that to say people are really trying and I'm proud of them and doing the work, seeing it through again. It's not showing up for two sessions and you cancel. I have some people do a drive-by at one. They out. And maybe I'm not their cup of tea. I'm not everybody's cup of coffee. That part is cool because I had to do the same thing when I had to find me a therapist. I, th- I contacted probably five. I think two were booked. Um, one, I was going to go with her, but I could tell during the consultation we were on Zoom, she was not paying attention. And I'm like, eh, I can't do this with my mental health. I need someone that's present. So I was blessed to have the one I have for over a year and she's amazing. Do the work on yourself. We have telehealth now, Zoom. You can do your therapy in the comfort of your own home. And I always say, do these YouTube videos, a channel like mine, of course, (laughs) and other, you know, some ministers out here that are phenomenal. Just listening to their sermons and applying them can do wonders. Uh, I talk about the same stuff on my channel because these are the tools I use. Um, If you are spiritual, believe in God, get a subscription to The Daily Word. I have it emailed to me and I also have the little books and I read that. And that'll keep you connected with God daily. Short reading that takes 10 minutes or less. Sometimes I go read the I'll read the Bible verse and then go on my Bible and follow that. And then I have a Bible planner as well. These are things that can help you strengthen your mind. But if you're in a relationship and things are, you know, you're still trying to figure it out, and you've been in a relationship like two months and you say, I don't think so. I this ain't gonna work. And think about what the person is doing. If it's real minor. You're not seeing that the rule. You know how long it takes to know somebody? Of course, if it doesn't seem healthy or you're getting a bunch of red flags early on, get out of it. I agree with that. But if it's minor stuff and you kind of don't know the person yet, see it through until the end. What are you going to do? Um, just keep replacing bodies? You know, that's not good. Give me another. That's not good. Give me another woman. That's not good. I'll take that man. 
Okay, that didn't work. Yeah, I did that. Oh, I did that very well in 2002 or 99 or whatever years I did that. That guy didn't work. Honey, I had me a new guy about, about two months. It was, hey, it was fun. It was fun because I felt like I was winning. You know, you you want to do me in or, or act up, you're getting replaced. Yeah, that's the young Tammy. I'm not going to do that now. Replace guys like there are nothing, you know, that that's not taking our time to acknowledge myself. I'm not acknowledging my shortcomings. I'm just replacing a person with another person. That's not healthy. That is not healthy. See it through until the end. If you want to lose weight, what do you have to do? Don't do what I did yesterday. I bought some candy for my students and I was eating it. Don't do that. You have to eat healthy and get on the treadmill. Like I have a treadmill here that I just don't even feel like getting on. But that's that's seeing it through until the end. And when you do those things, you will feel better about yourself. It takes work, though, and we want it easy. But what's easy in this life? Having money is not easy. Earning money is not easy. Going to work is not easy. Going to school is not easy. Being a daughter, being a son, being an auntie, being a nephew, being a niece, being a mother, being a father. It's not easy. It's not easy being a minister, being a therapist, being a lawyer, being a doctor. Whatever you do, whatever your profession is, you have to supervise people. You have to work with the public. You have to work with the government. It's tough. Nothing's, nobody said it would be easy. Nobody said life would be fair. But those that make it the resilient people, the tenacious people, they make it through the fire and through the storm and through the rain. And on the other side is a beautiful pot of gold and a rainbow. But the only way you're going to get to the rainbow is to see it through until the end. And you will feel bigger, better, stronger, greater later because you stuck it out. Talk to people. They're going to tell you, honey, child, especially if they're older. I had to pick cotton. That's what my mother had to do. You know, my mother went through some stuff. My dad dealt with racism. He had to go to the military. He had a, a bad marriage. He got a divorce and came to Chicago from Alabama and met my mom. He went through some stuff. He dealt with alcoholism. He was a diabetic. Yeah, he went through some shit. <laughs> he, did, he did. And my mother went through way more than him. Grew up. Her mother passed when she was six years old. She had to pick cotton. She was separated from her brother and sister for 16 years. She was a young mom. Um, I could go on and on. She had a nervous breakdown. My mother had cancer four times, seeing it through until the end. She she created that saying. My mother was bad in a good way. Strong. Strong. How can somebody have cancer four times and beat it three? That's a, that's, that lady was amazing. It's about seeing it through until the end. And that makes me proud to have their blood running through my veins. Were they perfect? Uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. Not even at all, but perfect for me. Perfect parents for me. So what are you going to do when they come for you? What are you going to do? Are you going to give it, give up, throw in the towel, complain, cheat, try to get into college when you know you don't deserve to get into that college and pay them off? Are you going to do it the right way and study? And get your license the right way and open your business the correct way, the honest way. Are you going to show up in that relationship? Are you going to show up for the person in the mirror that needs you? That's who we got to compete against people. And that's the person in the mirror. I don't compete against my friend. I don't try to outdo my sisters. I look in the mirror and say, girl, what you going to do today? Who Who is this girl in this mirror? Because when I lay my head on my pillow at night, it's going to be me and me talking to myself and dealing with my stuff. And the only way I could be a good aunt to them girls that I have and them little boys 
that I have is to show up for myself, to be a good future wife, to be a good therapist today, to be a good counselor with new kids I got to meet today. I got to meet some new kids. So far, it's going really good. For those of you that don't know, I'm back into counseling with the kiddos. It's going really well. I got a younger group. I had high schoolers. Woo. Now I have some grammar schoolers, and um, it might be the better, might be a better fit for me. But I have to show up, whether I want to or not. It's part of my job. And those brown girls and Latina beauties, both of them, all of them, they are looking at me to guide the way, to show them how to have healthy values, to show them how they can get into a good high school so they can go to a good college and be the nurse they want to be or the entrepreneur that they've been telling me about that they want to be. See it through. And when the tough comes, you'll know how to handle it. Be tenacious. Be gracious. Get your support thing going now because when something big happens, you'll know how to maneuver through it. This is what people do. I, I read a book, The Power of Positive Thinking, over and over and over. I tell you all about that book. I read that book over and over. I was reading it yesterday. I read pages of it. And one is called um, Try Prayer Power. But anyway, in the book, he talks about staying power. You want to be able to stay in the race. It's a gospel song that I love. And you got to stay in the race and keep the faith. That's what she said. You may be weary, but God will work it out. That's what, she, And that is a gospel truth. Stay in the race and keep the faith. I wouldn't dare try to sing that song. That lady can blow. <laughs> and it's like four something in the morning and you all will unfollow me, unsubscribe. <laughs> but yeah, that's all I want to talk about. That hit me. Um, when I talk about these topics, it kind of hit me from different things. And that's what I go with. And it's, you know, it comes from the heart. All righty. What you gonna do? See it through until the end, right? See it through. You got it. You got this. You are amazing. You are great. You are strong. You are resilient. You are a survivor. You are a warrior. You are a fighter. You got this. Tammy Sharice Walker. Hit that like button, hit subscribe, and have a beautiful day. Bye-bye.